we, we've got like three guiding principles in our business. One is work on really stimulating problems that are just interesting to us. Yeah. Second is work with inspiring people, and that goes for the clients we work with as well as, well as our own team. Yeah. And the third is that everybody should earn what they deserve, client included, yeah. us, uh, us included. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Championship Leadership Podcast. We got Luke Batty here from Central uh, England over in the UK. Thanks for joining us today, Luke. Appreciate it. Great to be here, Nate. Looking forward to speaking. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so what comes to mind for you when you hear Championship Leadership? That's the name of the podcast. Just I always like to ask, what does that mean to you when you hear that? I think just people who are taking the growth of their business or their team professionally in the same way that a, a, a sports person might do, right? It's uh, seeing as a profession rather than something you've fallen into. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Love it. Are you, uh, do you, speaking of sports, I guess, do you, do you follow American football at all or are you? Not no, really a sports no, guy. No, no, it's a little bit out of my uh, out of my remit, to be honest with you. Yeah, absolutely. Not you know, I I tend to like to ask that. Not too many from over there are. Uh, I did go to, you know, the NFL does come to England, and I was there in October to watch. I'm a Packer fan. I grew up in Wisconsin, where Green Bay's from, and uh, we went over there, and it was pretty awesome. Like. You know, it seemed like a lot of people in the UK definitely embrace the sport. But uh, also what was interesting, we stopped at a, a local pub afterwards and there was a soccer game or a, I guess you guys call football called soccer, soccer game on TV. And and uh, like everyone stopped and, and was was watching like the soccer game. And I think it was kind of like a critical moment in the game. And, uh, and that's when it hit me. I'm like, oh yeah, like they might like watching American football, but they really love like their football. Like it was, yeah, it was pretty, people, pretty awesome to see. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was interesting. Um, but anyways, uh, not what we're here to talk about. Um, well, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your story, maybe the path that you've been on and, and how that's gotten you to where you are today. And, and what is it that you're up to today for the listener? Yeah, great. So, um, so my background was actually as a behavioral scientist. So I'm really interested in how people make decisions, what influences what they buy, what they do. But I'm especially interested in how teams come together and try and solve problems and some of the psychology that actually gets in their way, slows them down. And over the last 10 years, I've worked with just over a thousand different leaders to really help them kind of fast track their team's performance in some way. And so now we're typically working with companies who maybe they're ahead of plan and they wanna see how much further ahead of plan they can get, or more often than not, there's some kind of big transformation or strategy that they're implementing and it's not kind of moving as quickly as they would like. Yeah. And our job is to come in and with what we understand about the psychology of teams, help them uh, make a strategic leap and fast track that. Um, and so everything we do in my business is called Sprint Valley. We call ourselves a change consultancy, but we get brought in when, you know, the plan is off plan. And everything we do is really about helping teams come together, really stare down the strategic risks that they're trying to navigate and help them kind of find a path through that. So I've uh, been running the business now for five years. Uh, I think we turned five in September and uh, we have a team of uh, 15 people, all global, uh, all remote by default. Um, and work with all sorts of companies, multinationals like McDonald's and Nike, and uh, a lot more now with private equity backed companies who have a big growth mandate and lots yeah. of pressure on uh, on achieving yeah. targets. So um, yeah, they, they quite like bringing us in now. So that's interesting. So you kind of took... Um... So if, you know, tell me if I'm wrong here. So from, from what I was hearing, so you, you, a lot of time on how people make essentially maybe buying decisions, and then you kind of transfer that into, you know, how they, they make decisions personally or inside of a team and, and then yeah. how you can maybe bring them together through some of that. Is that right? Yeah. And, and there's a, there's a formula that underlies behavior change and you can look yeah. at any strategy as fundamentally a behavior change challenge, right? We want customers to buy something they're not buying now or more of it. We want employees to do something new or do something more that they're not doing right yeah. now. 
And so there's a whole toolkit from the, the science of behavior change that we can draw on to really help us increase the odds that that outcome is going to happen. Yeah. And so the formula for behavior change is for anything you want to do, you've got to have capability, which is you can think of as either psychological or physical skill. There's got to be opportunity, which might be around the resources you have access to, the process you follow, or the support you get from the people around you. And then yeah. motivation, which is about, you know, do I plan to do it? Do I want to do it? Is there something in it I perceive is going to benefit me? And then feedback, do I know if I'm on track or not? Mm -hmm. And so we use, that's the same formula that's been used by governments across the world to get them wearing masks or get vaccines or stop smoking or eat less fatty food. And we kind of take that and apply it in a business context as a way of kind of getting an x-ray on what's holding us back right now and what opportunities or levers do we need to pull to kind of move the needle kind of moving forward. So, uh, it's yeah, that's interesting. So, so did you actually use that to help people to, to wear masks and get vaccines? Like you just said, like, was that a, some of our team? I'm have, sure yeah, a lot so of companies were trying to do that, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, we didn't do that as a project, but our, our team are comprised of a mixture of people who have had pretty senior levels within big corporate and then people who are at professor level uh, in academic institutions and so yeah some of the team were were pretty heavily involved in the uk looking at ways to kind of increase compliance with safety and uh, you know uh, yeah. all, all the covid related stuff so it's a pretty interesting area i mean there's a there's Very a lot of it going on now and uh over the last 10 15 years it's got really robust so these tools and frameworks and ways of thinking about shifting behavior have got pretty advanced now yeah definitely yeah interesting what's uh well who who have been some individuals uh in your life that help really kind of impact you as a leader and i also I always kind of just like that you know more so like really what's the characteristics about them that have really stood out that have helped maybe mold who you are as a leader wow that's a brilliant question um I've probably got two answers to that. One of them I'd say would be my dad. I think um, my dad is a sort of a, like a force to be reckoned with in his character. Yeah. But the main thing I think that I've taken from, in, from him is he's just a, a remarkable facilitator. And so when you see him in a room with his clients and his peers, he has an amazing ability to get everybody to really lean in and take part in whatever the challenge is that that, yeah. that team are working on. And um, yeah, I, I'm definitely sort of standing on uh, the shoulders of giants in what I've been able to, to learn from him. Yeah. And then if I'm honest with you, the other is, is, is just clients, right? Like I think, yeah. um, I think every time you work with an organization, you learn something new, not just about your own work and your own services and what you bring to the table, but they're bringing so much expertise and nuance as well. I always yeah. just see those engagements as a great chance to, to learn from each other, whether that's in terms of leadership or prioritization or operations or finance or any of the different functions that we end up getting involved with. You, you, you know, we try and work with people. Well, should I say that we, we've got like three guiding principles in our business. One is work on really stimulating problems that are just interesting to us. Yeah. Second is work with inspiring people. And that goes for the clients we work with as well as, well as our own team. Yeah. And the third is that everybody should earn what they deserve, client included, yeah. us, us included. And so I think uh, we tend to work with pretty interesting clients that are very ambitious, but just uh, recognize the need for somebody external to help shine a light on, you know, what the next few steps or the best next few steps should be in growing the business or sales or improving profitability or what it, whatever it might be. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. I, you know, like coming back to your dad, it's, I always love being around people like that, that are just kind of have that infectious personality and are able to just kind of bring everybody together. And um, it does, it's I don't awesome, know, I suppose because right? it doesn't happen that often, right? I mean, you, yeah. you just, it's really, it's fun when you're around those types of individuals. Yeah, um, I, I think it's that that servant leadership concept. I, I really buy into that. I really do yeah. see that work. And when you, for me, the, the amazing thing about a facilitator mindset is you're not there to have the answer. I think that's yeah. the key shift. You know, when you realize that your job as a leader is to switch from telling people what to do and uh, how to get there to helping them uncover that path, 
a it's <laughs> it's slightly less pressure that you've got to know the answer to all questions which you're, you're never going to but b you suddenly start getting to see other people really rise up and uh enjoy the challenge as well and i think that's yeah. something that, that yeah I, I get a lot of satisfaction from yeah yeah definitely well what's what's the vision for you uh with with sprint valley um i think championship leaders have incredible vision and also courage to take action on it because it's often bigger and grander than many others maybe have the courage to even see so yeah. what's what is that and, and what's the impact more importantly you want to make through that yeah great i mean um it's pretty humble if i'm honest with you nate so about five years ago before i started the business i'd spent a decade in my career with this mindset of get promoted, earn more, get promoted, earn more, yeah, and, yeah. and found myself then on the board of a, of a yeah. previous employer. And I hated the work. I was just, I had uh, slept walked into a role that I had no idea what I was moving towards. It was just this keep earning more, keep getting promoted. And when I got there, I realized I'd become completely disconnected from the work that actually energized me. Mm -hmm. And I took a decision at that point to step down from the board, take a side. Really, it was a voluntary demotion, right? And, and actually what I realized was what I got kicks out of was working with the client to help them solve the problem. That was the piece of the puzzle yeah. that I would have got out of bed every day to do whether I was being paid or not. Yeah. And it was the best move of my entire career because it forced me to ask myself, a really powerful question and that's what does a great day look like for you what are you doing are you selling stuff are you making things are you with people are you fixing are you persuading what is it and i now think that you know my job or anybody's job really in their career is to find a way to fill their days with as much of that work that brings them energy as they can and get as paid as much as they can for that and so now my vision in sprint valley is to build an ecosystem of other entrepreneurs who want to get to that outcome. And so right now we operate as a consultancy where we're moving to is operating as a group of businesses where we provide them with the systems, all of the business infrastructure to help them realize their own vision and stay really focused on the work that matters to them. And so we have a couple of different goals in that, but you know, we're looking to transform 10,000 client careers over the next five years. And that's really through our work. And so the, the most satisfying part of my job is seeing clients who rediscover their love for their work in our work together. And I think mm -hmm. we're very good at taking a big, scary challenge and turning it, turning it into a career adventure. And so uh, our philosophy is how do we help kind of clients who are up against something brand new? There's no playbook. They've never navigated this before. We come in, we bring them some smart process, some guidance, some coaching to move through that. And as a result, we get them to the win and they take the credit. That's great. We're the sidekick, yeah. they're the hero. Yeah. Um, but when clients are re-energized about working on the hard things in their business, that's the legacy that that we really want to leave. So yeah. Um, so yeah, so as I said earlier on, you know, as long as I'm coming to work and it's super interesting problems that we're working on with inspiring people and everybody gets what they deserve, those are really my guiding lights. So I don't have, I want to build yeah. a business that is viable but I don't yeah. have an intention necessarily or an ambition to sell. So it's more sure. about uh, bringing a great group of people together to do great things. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate that. What, uh, what is a moment in your life that was kind of like a fork in the road, critical moment where obviously you, you did decide how you have and has you where you are today, but had you not, you'd be in a very different place. I, there's a lot of power for those in that place right now trying to make that right decision, not knowing which way to go to hear from others and how they decided. So is there a moment or two that comes to mind you can share? Yeah, I mean, um, I I think that moment of stepping down from the board would yeah, have been right. probably the pinnacle moment. And there was a, a second, actually. So after that, I had an opportunity to create a joint venture with my previous employer to start Sprint Valley. And they were very good, very, very supportive. It was a great deal. And uh, I kind of probably wouldn't have had the courage to go for it if it wasn't under the wing of another, another business. And so I, I kind of did that. But there was a moment then that I think a lot of people face as they go and start their own thing. And it's this decision to make of, okay, is this, is this, uh, is this just me, right? Am I building a business that's a lifestyle business that will give me 
you know, financial security and satisfaction and everything else, or am I building a team? And what I had in the early kind of two years of Sprint Valley was this sort of feast and famine experience where you sell loads of stuff and then you're delivering it and then you haven't yeah. had time to do the business development. And so then you kind of have this, oh, no moment, you've got to go yeah. back and do that. And, um, and that's fine, right? Like on balance, it washes out and you can do really well out of that. But the only real way out of that is to decide to build a team and to build the systems and structures and process that um, make sure all the right pillars of work are happening together. And, mm -hmm. and I kind of took a decision uh, year two to say, OK, this is has the potential to be much bigger than me. And actually, I want to go and build a team. And now I'm not a uh, I'm not a natural born manager at all. Like it does not appeal to me kind yeah. of having That's a business of 100 people and all the rest of the stuff. But I think I had some really great advice from an early mentor, which is just you don't need to be great at everything. You need to double down on the stuff that only you can do and then make sure you've got people around you who can fill in the gaps and they get energy from the stuff that you don't. Right. As long as yeah. it's happening, it doesn't need to be you doing it. And I yeah. think that was a real that was kind of a, a light bulb moment for me in thinking about what a team could and should be. Yeah? It's not yeah. just about the performance management bit that I think everybody dreads. It's actually just find the people that are energized by the pieces of the puzzle that don't energize you. Yeah. And then you've got, you know, you, everybody's playing to their strengths then. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. Thank you for sharing that too. Um, as we kind of start to wrap this up, if there's, you know, if you have one or two daily uh, principles that you live by or, you know, two things that, if if the listener were to implement today help move their life forward today what would that be wow that's a good question um i would i would really encourage there's two things one's really practical okay this is, and i learned yeah. this very recently don't drink coffee in the morning for like 90 minutes until you after you've woken up that sounds really silly yeah i've heard this too yeah like if anybody can connect with that feeling of it hitting like three o'clock in the afternoon and you're just useless, right? Your brain's done, you're kind of exhausted and you're getting really easily distracted. The reason that that happens or one of the reasons that that happens is that when you drink coffee early in the morning, like very, very early, there's essentially like a tiredness hormone that's been accumulating in your brain overnight that just gets stored up. And if you don't drink coffee for the first 90 minutes, your body processes that away. But if you drink coffee, it just sort of stores it and doesn't process it and so by the time the coffee wears off it floods back again and you start feeling tired again so that, i discovered this about six months ago yeah and it like it really has changed my energy throughout the day i don't get the at this this is the time right i don't get that crash in the afternoon yeah. that i have for years so yeah. that's been like small but quite revelatory i would say yeah i've heard the science behind that is when you wake up your cortisol levels are just naturally the highest they're going to be throughout mm. the day and when you take when you take that when you drink the coffee right away it kills that essentially and yeah. so the cortisol i believe is gives you plenty of energy or whatever so yeah 90 minutes is what i had heard to do and uh so i've been living that myself and and it does make a difference so yeah i love that yeah i've, yeah. I've been i've been very very impressed with that and then i think i think the second is just that question to ask yourself of what brings you energy and i think getting in touch with that and being really clear about the yeah. kind of work that you just naturally will gravitate towards i think that's a fabulous thing to reflect on and, and something that maybe not many people do and what you'll find is that in your day there are key activities whether you're what you prefer being with people or being in analytical mode or persuasive mode or it's about communication or it's about thinking but I think understanding that preference yeah. is kind of the key to how you want to structure your business so that you're surrounding people with the people who can allow you to invest more of your time in the stuff that you just bring 110% to. Otherwise, yeah. you end up kind of clogging your day with a bunch of stuff. And hey, it's not perfect. There's right. sometimes there's things you got to do that you don't want to do. That's fine. Yeah. But just but doing that consciously and intentionously, I think it, it, intentionally, should I say, I think that's a, a really underrated 30 minute activity to take on a walk just to reflect on. Uh, it's definitely changed how I think about structuring the team, design yeah. the business and you know, how I spend my time. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love that. What is the best way uh, for the listener to find out more about what you're up to or if you're on yeah. social media at all? Or yeah, yeah what yeah. the best so, channel? Uh, yeah, so uh, check out our site, which is www.sprintvalley.com. We have a bunch of free resources on there to help you uh, make your teams more effective problem solvers, to help you build accountability in teams, share vision, all sorts of great stuff, helping them navigate the change curve. Um, and we're also on LinkedIn as well, but I would uh, I'd definitely hit the site. There's some great resources. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'll get that linked up for you. And uh, if you've enjoyed this conversation, don't go anywhere and uh, you know stay right here for the next episode for more incredible guests just like Luke. Luke, thank you so much for being here. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Nate. Good to speak.